Cecil the Lion and Manufactured Outrage. I'm Brian Lilly with The Rebel Dot Media. Let me ask you a question and I want you to answer it honestly. Had you heard of Cecil the Lion before last week? Before the news of a hunter killing him had taken off in the media, social and otherwise? Probably not. Not if you're most people. Yet now, people around the world are outraged about the death of a lion they didn't know existed at the hands of a man they didn't know existed. Why? Why are they so outraged? I'll admit that Cecil, like all the lions I've seen, was certainly a majestic creature, but I'm also pretty sure that lions die every day and there's no public mourning, no outcry over the deaths. So why this time? What's the difference here? And why is the media fueling this story the way that they are? I, over the past several weeks, we've had three videos released showing high-level people inside Planned Parenthood talk about how to perform abortions in just the right way so that they can sell the lungs, the hearts, the livers, and even limbs of aborted babies. And I mean, we're talking about selling body parts, human body parts for profit, and the media silent, or they defend Planned Parenthood, tell their audience that there's no truth there, no evidence, when the evidence that they refuse to publish or broadcast shows that the stories are true. What kind of public outcry would there be against Planned Parenthood if that story was treated the same as Cecil the Lion's being treated? Of course, it's not. Even left-wing academic Camille Paglia, a former Planned Parenthood member, a supporter of the organization and what she calls abortion rights, has decried the liberal media on this in an interview with Salon.com. She said it was a huge story and, dis and disturbing story. But there was total silence in the liberal media. That kind of censorship was shockingly unprofessional. The liberal major media were trying to bury the story by ignoring it. So nothing for that story, but for Cecil the Lion, non-stop coverage. Even Jimmy Kimmel got in on it. Kimmel, who I like, who I think is generally the funniest of the late night talk show hosts, he jumped all over Cecil the Lion, even encouraging donations, getting choked up before engaging in some anti-American rhetoric. If you want to make this into a, uh, a positive, you can, uh, <laughs> sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I, okay, I'm good. Um, make a donation, support them at the very least. Uh, maybe, maybe we can show the world that not all Americans are like this jackhole here, this dentist, the top dentist. Again, all of this for a lion in Zimbabwe that most of us had never heard of, killed by a man that we'd also never heard of. On social media, you can't escape this story, and people are denouncing Minnesota dentist Walter Palmer without knowing him. He's had protests at his dental office. He's even had protesters show up at his home. People with showing up with stuffed animals, with water guns, calling him a coward for shooting and killing a lion with a bow and arrow. It's a mob mentality. People are jumping on it, but what actually started it? Anti-hunting zealotry. That is what started this. I'm not a big game hunter. I have not hunted lions. I have no interest in it. One day I might hunt deer or ducks, but I don't have any interest in going on a safari. It's just not my thing. Not even the kind of safari where you just go and watch the animals. But unlike most people who are denouncing what the dentist has done, I've talked to big game hunters. I've talked to people who've gone on safaris and what they've told me is backed up by scientific research. This helps the animals. The controlled hunting of big game, be it lions or rhinos or even elephants, has resulted in more land available for these animals and a conservation mentality that's helped revitalize habitats and dwindling populations. Now, I know that Cecil was on a reserve. He was wearing a collar. He was being studied. He was not supposed to have been killed. Walter Palmer says he didn't know any of that. He was relying on his paid local guides who, if Palmer is telling the truth, acted unscrupulously in luring Cecil off the reserve. But it's not just Cecil and his death at the hands of a hunter that's being attacked here. It's big game hunting and it's hunting in general that's being attacked by the likes of PETA and their president, Ingrid Newkirk, who called for Palmer's death in a statement. She said, Hunting is a coward's pastime if, as, it has, as has been reported, this dentist and his guides lured Cecil out of the park with food so as to shoot him on a private property because shooting him in the park would have been illegal. He needs to be extradited, charged, and preferably hanged. Yes, PETA. They love animals. Well, the ones they don't kill in their own shelters anyway. But as for humans, they're fine with killing humans. But see that first line she said? Hunting is a coward's pastime. Really? Has she done it? Likely not. Pete is filled with the type of militant vegetarians and vegans that believe because they don't eat meat or animal products, no one should. 
I remember asking them once where they were protesting dairy cows, calling for them to be set free, and they just had no clue. They hadn't thought that the cows might be killed in the wild, starve, or freeze if they were just let go, wander off as they wanted. This is an attack on all hunting, but let me give you some facts on hunting and preserving animals and animal habitat. Conservation Magazine, an environmental publication from the University of Washington, questioned whether hunting could improve outcomes for at-risk animal populations. They wrote, is there such evidence? According to a 2005 paper by Nigel Leader Williams and colleagues in the Journal of International Wildlife Law and Policy, the answer is yes. Leader Williams describes how the legalization of white rhinoceros hunting in South Africa motivated private landowners to reintroduce the species onto their lands. As a result, the country saw an increase in white rhinos from fewer than 100 individuals to more than 11,000, even while a limited number of trophies were killed as trophies. The article goes on. In a 2011 letter to Science Magazine, Leader Williams also pointed out that the implementation of controlled legalized hunting was also beneficial for Zimbabwe's elephants. Implementing trophy hunting, hunting has doubled the area of the country under wildlife management relative to the 13% in state protected areas, thanks to the inclusion of private lands, he says. As a result, the area of suitable land available to elephants and other wildlife has increased, reversing the problem of habitat loss and helping to maintain a sustained increase in Zimbabwe's already large elephant population. What the advocate wants, what advocates want, though, is just an end to hunting. Not just trophy hunting, not big game hunting, all hunting. They don't care that hunters are, for the most part, some of the most fervent conservationists on the planet and pay for nature reserves, even ones they can't hunt on, in order to give species a place to live. What's driving the outrage over Cecil is partly the emotion of the average person feeling outraged at what they see as an injustice, but it's being pushed by the anti-hunting movement and abetted by a mainstream media that puts the life of one lion above the health of total animal populations and definitely puts the life of one lion above the, the lives of the many human beings, the human lives lost, that they could be covering.